Hi viewers, welcome you all to the 26th episode of the Mysore Sport YouTube channel. Today's episode is a saga of courage, valor and effort combined with sacrifice by an ice skater from Mysore. He is 26 year old Akash Aradhya who is a national champion in short speed uh, skating in, in the country and he has represented India in the pre-Olympic qualifiers held in Europe. On behalf of the Mysore Sport YouTube channel, I welcome him for our 26th episode. Thank you so much for having me on the show of Mysore Sport, sir. And it's an honor to be here and being uh, interviewed by you. So thank you so much for having me on the show. Great, Akash. Thanks for coming and, uh, and uh, joining us on this chat show too. Uh, Mysore and uh, ice skating. What is synonymous? It's, it's quite uh, exciting to have an ice skating champion from Mysore. Uh, how did it happen? So, of course, that's like the normal question I get asked every time I go do a World Cups or anything. It's like the first question is like, do you guys have an ice rink or like how do you do it? Like I know, like normally like India is like a tropical country, summer country. So like it's always the most important, the most. Uh, and like, that too, cliche. Mysore. Uh, yes. producing a uh, ice skating champion i mean like uh, of course we are like if, with regards to ice skating we are like the the majority is very less but we've all been like uh, national roller skating champions and like asian medalists from mysore so it's just that it just needed a, a bit of a switch into the sport so it happened so it all started in 2006 where uh, Shrikant sir had taken us to this uh, ice skating rink, a very small ice skating rink, like one fourth of in natural of what we need. So you being a national uh, roller skating champion and uh, already uh, you had exploits. Yes. So uh, that introduction there, yes. how did how did it uh, uh, entice you or uh, make you uh, take take to that sport? Is that I just fell in the feel of the sport, the way ice feels, the way it feels you're gliding on something and that itself just made me fall in love with the whole sport itself. You said so. it was in, uh, it was it in was Kolkata, in, yeah. yeah, so it was in a very in an amusement park and then that's where we skated for the first time and uh, skating there and like of course at the first few steps we hated it, it's very weird, like normally we are so used to being on roller skates and my whole life, by that time I'd already skated around like uh, 12, 13 years on roller, so all of a sudden switching something which is also similar, not similar, it felt very weird. But later on, day by day by day, getting on the ice more often, it felt beautiful. So that's where I got addicted to the sport. So training in outside India, you started uh, uh, in Canada and went through all the, uh, in, went through to Europe, and uh, in 2014, starting from 2014 World Cup uh, pre-qualifying, and then 18, and then now. 21-22. You are the only Indian to participate in the pre-Olympics uh, qualifiers. Yes. Uh, tell us about the saga and the effort which is put in and uh, how come it... Uh, tell us about this. Viewers uh, need to know about this. I mean, it started as like, of course, like even with roller skating before I was uh, representing India and roller skating as well. From 2010 to 2014, I was in the national team as well. I was pretty good over there. It's one of the best in the country. It's not to brag, but it was also a fact that it was pretty good at it. So I wanted to go take part in the Olympics. But of course, unfortunately, roller skating was not in the Olympics, but ice skating was, and I was already introduced to the sport. So I said, I want to try it out. And then like, yeah. uh, so I said, uh, after I think my 2015-16 season, I said, okay, I want to make a switch. So I went into Calgary. I had some friends who were- In always, Canada? Yes, in Canada. So I already had some friends skating there. I said, okay. So in ice skating, there are two types. There's long track and short track. Short track is the one I do where we have a group of racers in a track this big, in a 111 meter track. And there is long track, which is a 400 meter ice rink but there is it's time trial Correct. it's one after the other one after yeah, the other true. but coming from roller skating where we are racing like this all the time so i was i really wanted to be in a sport where it's racing and comparative strategies planning tactics that's that's my thing Correct. So that's what i've been doing my whole life so Correct. i switched into it so and then uh, so i went to calgary where they had both the facilities Correct. so i had to apply for that place and they accepted me at one point and then i got through it and i had a beautiful coach there it was joffrey Locke, and uh, he helped me out through my whole transition because the thing is that we had already you done to our, acclimate yes. to the conditions it's everything like first thing that was a high altitude place the weather imagine we are here in t-shirts and uh, shorts and everything Correct. there like it's freezing 
the ice rink itself is at minus seven temperature. Correct. So it's very cold, and those those things were you got used to it. But the thing is that even though we say skating of roller skating and ice skating is like skating, skating is what we say, but both the sports are like maybe twenty five percent similar. It was a whole different sport, and the intensity and difficulty of ice skating was another level. The endurance level is entirely different. Endurance, strength, endurance, and the the technique, the core muscles, or anything. It can be. It was very, very difficult, and like, and trust me, over there I was worse than an amateur when I first went there. But of course, with a lot of time and effort and hard work, it got got me through a lot of stages. Like uh, I was so slow when I got there. Like for example, to give it a perspective, in 500 meters I was clocking 55 seconds when I first entered. And then later on, after a few years, my personal best in the national record for 500 meters was 42.8. So like that is the progression I had made. Like tell uh, us about your recent 20, uh, 21, 22 World Cups. Uh, you participated uh, in uh, uh, Japan and uh, China and yes. then uh, Netherlands and, and uh, Hungary. Yes. So how was that and how did it uh, keep going with the top group of in your uh, best event in the 500 meters, 1000 and 1500? So to be honest, like my performance was not up to the mark I had expected, but with a lot of things came into uh, existence at that time with COVID starting, away from training with the most crucial time of my life, like where like for example like I wasn't like a top skater like everybody else, where that gap would not have made a difference. I was still technically a new athlete. But you are the top skater from India. Yeah, but at that point it didn't matter anything. Like right, see, like see, I'm new. I'm a top skater for India, but like to qualify for the Olympics it doesn't matter what country you're from, right? You they just take top 36 from the whole world or yeah. top 60 from overall men. So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day like where you're from. All they care is that there is an individual. He has to go take part, get the world ranking medal. So that is where the biggest problem I had. I'm you must be satisfied with uh, the uh, being the only Indian amongst the 120 members to finish around 48th and the top uh, amongst the um, uh, amongst the uh, top uh, group of uh, skaters. And uh, that gives you a mental satisfaction that I have done something uh, worthwhile. Yeah, for example, like one of the 500 meters, like a few years ago, I I finished around uh, in the world ranking of top 33. So that was a that was a big moment for me for sure. Like clocking the uh, finishing 33, and in the 2019 uh, 2021 World Championships, I, I finished 39 in the world ranking, and then 33. That was the top ranking yes. in in the country. Yes. Nobody and, has achieved it. No, in the World Championships. That was the highest ranking that was there. So, like finishing 33 was a big deal for me. Now, uh, over the period of eight to ten years, you might have spent around a crore of rupees from your own family, and they have dedicated you the support from the system. For example, the uh, Federation Ice Skating Federation of India and the government. Uh, uh, do you think much more can be done to support the uh, sportsmen? This first thing, like yeah, I'm very grateful for my parents who supported me with, for example, coming from India, where like normally parents don't really support their parents' kids into going out for training. Correct. Normally they send their kids to study, make money, and everything. Right, professional It's sport professional, itself. Yes. Many of the many of the parents don't. They don't want to do it. No. Yeah. And then in that era, and like my parents, I have to be really grateful for them who had this open mind to send me out instead of going there for college or earning money. They spent money and sent me out. So that was a big deal, and which I'm humbled and. Like I'm always grateful for them. So with regards to like uh, money, it was like it was they just didn't care about anything. It's not like we're comfortable or anything. No, being, but like being coming from a middle class family, yeah, so not from a very high. Yes, exactly. Standard. That was the point. So, yeah. So doing that itself, not everybody does that. So having that itself was like I'm very grateful for them. But and then. Uh, Like you asked me, like what the system can do for us. Like for example, yes, compared to what I had the support from roller skating federation to go into the World Cups, the ice skating federation did ten folds better. For example, in ice skating, we used to pay for everything, and we never used to get something back. With regards to ice skating federation, they they used to reimburse some amount of the. It's like, uh, but still, at the end of the day, especially when you're in a sport like ice skating, which is not and being a national champion. See, yeah, I guess so. So yeah, like for that, I would say like. uh because ice skating is not a cliche sport in india andaga so we have to spend a lot more money for it for example like i have to go outside india just to train, train yeah the basic infrastructure is not there so of course like if the if the federations the governments can set up uh, put up a set of athletes to can go there 
permanently trained up her with uh, yeah, technical it, support yes. as well as uh, so, physical uh, physiotherapists and the yeah, other all backup. Of those things. There's like there's a whole package. For example, like for every athlete to perform, there is normally four to five people working for them. It's like it might be the team leaders, the coaches, the physios, the mental prep, true, true. the blade technicians, like the coaches, and everything. Like these things, it's a whole, it's a whole setup. system. It's a yeah. whole system that needs to be set up. But of course, we are new to the sport, and like sports itself is not a big deal in India. Of course, we do make a big deal of it. We try it. Things are changing. But we need to change. We need to go more professional, and we, we need, uh, for example, uh, a national champion under the top scheme would have helped you. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe, but uh, it's going to take some time for the whole system to change. But uh, to be honest, what it is 10 years ago and what it is now, it has changed a lot. And everybody, people are opening up their mind for everything. So it's great. That, uh, you were the flag bearer for the Indian contingent for in 2017 uh, Games. Uh, game so, yeah, in like, Japan. How was the feeling leading the Indian contingent and being in the with the Indian flag? So like, uh, first thing I was really proud that I was taking part in the summer games in the 2010 Asian Games and 2017 I was the winter Asian Games athlete. But when my federation said we are make, we are the flag bearer for the thing, that was the whole different level of excitement for me. Because I was going through a tough phase of it before going to the games and then carrying our Indian flag, I cried, I choked in myself and like, I, had, I couldn't speak anything. And that then, must be the proudest moment. Yes, it was the biggest moment in my whole life. Any day you can ask me anything, I would say, what is the biggest moment in your life, in your athlete career? I would say carrying our Indian flag and walking down the aisle with my whole team of 32 contingents behind me was the biggest moment in my whole life. Like, I don't think there is, maybe if I was the flag bearer, if I was in the Olympics, that would have been a bigger moment, but to this day, being the flag bearer for Team India at the 2017 Asian Winter Games in Japan was the biggest moment in my life. Tell us about your parents, their support and uh, what they have done, done to you from the young age of two years to now. They have been a great uh, support both uh, morally, mentally and financially. Yeah. So my, uh, my father is uh, Nagbush Naradya, is a chartered accountant. My mom is a housewife, but I wouldn't just call her a housewife because she has dedicated her whole life for me. From a very young age, I started when I was three years old. So like we used to take me to, like we started walking to tra practice, going to school, coming back, then taking me to practice morning and evening, walking, then the scooter, then car and everything. Like she has dedicated her whole life. Out of the 16 national championships I've done, she has been there for 15 of them. True. So, and then like uh, my father, like one thing like my father always says is like, every time I ask him for an equipment, it's like, he just asks one thing. How much is it? Do you need it? So that's it. He's like, okay, take it. Your uh, take for the youngsters. So like, of course, like if to be bl uh, frank about it, like I, winter sports is not a, especially South India, middle and South India. It's not a big deal for us. Like it's not as famous as cricket, tennis, or anything. So, but still, it's a beautiful sport. It's exciting. It's adventurous. Like especially the ski and the snow sports. It's it's amazing. The more the people explore it, the more you start falling in love with it. But of course, with the infrastructure problems, we have a great difficulty. But like one way is like we can try to like find growth in it is like with the federations and the government working together, trying to promote the sport, publicize it, advertise it. Thanks for accepting my invite and, and coming answer. and talking to uh, me in, in regarding your exploits. It's and, a uh, great efforts in the pre-Olympics. Uh, thanks thanks, so much. thanks Thank for you coming. so much for having me on the show.